today. My message is today is a weighty life, a weighty life. And a weighty life speaks of a life of importance, of significance, a, a fruitful life, a life of multiplication. The scripture says in Genesis that we were created or designed to be fruitful and to multiply. You could say to live a weighty life, a life of significance, of importance. Paul said in Romans that in Christ we are to rule and to reign in life. That speaks of a weighty life. Uh, Jesus gave us a great commission and he told us to go into all the world and to preach the gospel. And that again speaks of a weighty life fulfilled through the kingdom of God and recognizing what we do in the kingdom has eternal consequences. And I recognize we are all in different stages of life, different places of life. Certainly, we all recognize that, but a weighty, we can each have a weighty life, a significant life, an important life in our sphere of influence. And for each person, that's different. But I think of somebody like Caleb in the scriptures who at 85, he had that attitude that even at 85, he would live a weighty life. And he said, give me this mountain. And I see that till the day we die, we have the call of God. We are designed by God to live a weighty life, uh, an important life, and a significant life, uh, a life of fruitfulness, a life of ruling and reigning of multiplication. And in 20, this year that we live in, 2021, coming out of 2020, it's important to guard our, our mindsets, to guard our, our thinking, not to become so cautious, so, so uh, wait and see mentality because of the volatility of the world that we live in. And yes, we, have a, we are in a very volatile time. In every sector of society, there's volatility. And yet, what we see in the scriptures that is that every hero, every person God used didn't look to the volatility of the circumstances or the of society or the world that they lived in, but they stepped out. You could call it a risk. They took a risk and saw God fulfill through their lives a weighty life. I think of David when he fought Goliath. There was a great risk. I think of Joshua, who stepped out as a young leader. Moses had just failed to bring the, the Hebrew people into the promised land. Joshua, well, I mean, there was no reason he should have succeeded. He stepped out, though. He took a risk. He lived a weighty life. I, I think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they refused to bow down to the king. They, they took a great risk. In fact, they were even thrown into the fire, uh, but Jesus was with them. I think of, I think of Paul, I, whoever, he took a great risk in preaching the gospel through throughout the, the known world at that time, and he was thrown into jail many times. And yet through it all, they lived weighty lives. We are called to live weighty lives, and not to wait and see until the circumstances all line up, but we are called to live lives of importance, of significance, fruitfulness in this year, 2021, to have that attitude like Caleb, give me this mountain. I love what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 57. He says, thanks be to God who gives us the victory. That implies speaking of a victorious, a weighty life. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our victory is, that is the foundation for a weighty life, is that life of Christ within us. And then he goes on and he says, therefore, my dear brethren, stand firm. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor is not in vain. He's speaking of victory. He's speaking of our labor in the Lord. He's speaking of living a weighty life, of eternal consequences in the kingdom of God. But between the victory and between that weighty life, he uses this terminology, stand firm. Stand firm. And if you think of that word, stand, in context of battle, in context, if you have a victory, you had a battle. Victory implies battle. Now, in the context of a battle, winning a victory, standing is a defensive position. And so when Paul says stand firm, he's speaking of protecting what has already been won. What has already been won has been won in Christ Jesus. And that's why he says our victory is in Christ. Now stand firm, protect what Christ has already won. One, he defeated evil, he defeated sin, he defeated sickness, he defeated the grave. Now we are to stand our position, to stand firm in what he has done. And in so doing, 
We live a weighty life in the kingdom of God, a fruitful life, a life of multiplication, a life of significance in our world or our sphere of influence. And mark my words, every single person, you watching today, me preaching today, God has called each of us in our sphere to live a weighty life. Life. Today, three keys I, I, that I see to standing firm and living a weighty life in 2021. Number one, stand firm in the day of evil. Stand firm in the day of evil. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 13, Paul says, take up the full armor of God. Let me say this. We preached full messages, both Pastor Peter and I, on the armor of God. The armor of God, I'm not preaching it again, today at least. The armor of God is all found in Christ Jesus. It's all that victory that Christ Jesus has given to us. That's the armor of God. It's the breastplate of righteousness, a gift. It's the helmet of salvation, a gift. It's the sword of the Spirit, a gift. It's the shield of faith, it's a gift. It's all a gift in Christ. So we're, he's drawing our attention back to the victory that Christ has won. So he says, take up that full armor so that when, notice when, not if, when, the day of evil comes. Day of evil speaks of difficulties, of opposition, setbacks, loss, hurts, pain. The day of evil, when it comes, you will be able to stand your ground. And having done everything to stand, stand firm. Notice he says, when it comes, when it comes. The question is not, will it come? But how will we face the day of evil when it comes? Because it will come, comes to us all. How will we face it? And I would say that the wisdom of the Lord would tell us, prepare for the day of evil before it comes. Not to be caught off guard or surprised, but to prepare. And that's why we renew our minds. That's why we, even when times are good, we don't just forget about God. We keep digging in. We keep growing, becoming, you could say, spiritually fit. That's what we do with our physical bodies. We exercise, we get fit so that, that our bodies, you know, fend off disease and sickness and such things. We get physically fit, but there's a spiritual fitness and wisdom would say the day of evil will come. It comes to us all. Jesus said many of the afflictions of the righteous. So he never promised a, 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 a life free from the day of evil. It'll come. So preparing for it. And how do we do that? Being standing firm in who we are in Christ, the victory that he has won, is preparing us to, in the day of evil, seeing and seizing the opportunity that God provides to each of us in the day of evil. And then when we see it, and then when we seize it, we turn it around and we help others who are also experiencing that same difficulty, that same challenge, that same day of evil. We're blessed to be a blessing. And that is how we live a weighty life, a life of significance, of influence in other individuals' lives. Now, Paul said in Ephesians 6, he said, having done all, having done all, having done all, keep standing. I mean, having done all, in other words, when you've done everything that you know to do, you've prayed, you've believed, you've given, you've done every, you've been generous, you've done everything, and yet you don't see a change yet, keep standing. Keep standing. In other words, you can't figure it all out. Keep standing, he says. You know, I've learned in life, and I would, I would, I would, I would caution each of us, let's not get stuck on the why. The whys of life. There are certain whys, like why God would you allow this to happen? God, why did this happen in my life? We all have, I have whys that have yet to be answered. And if we get stuck on the why, we may not end up fulfilling the weighty life that God has called us to live. God, why the pandemic in 2020, 2021? There are certain whys. I have learned, so important, to spin that why around and turn it into a what. In other words, not why, but what. Not, in other words, what now, God? What now? We could ask the question, God, why do you allow good things, I mean bad things to happen to the righteous? God, why do you allow bad things to happen to the righteous? Well, he did say that rain falls on the just and the unjust. The question isn't so much, God, why do you allow bad things to happen to the righteous? But God, when bad things happen to the righteous, what happens to the righteous? And the question is, when bad things happen to the righteous, the righteous get better. 
The righteous get stronger. The righteous get wiser. The righteous get, they, they, they rise up in the faith of Christ and they overcome the challenge. That is the benefit of being in Christ, of being the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so when the, when the evil day comes, those of us who are standing firm in Christ, we ask God, instead of getting stuck in the wise, there's certain wise I, 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 I don't know if we'll know until eternity. But let's not get stuck on the why. Let's turn it around and go to the what. God, what now? I recognize I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. That's standing firm in Christ. What do you have for me now? It's rising up in faith. It's getting better. It's getting stronger. It's getting wiser. And then turning it and helping other, other, other people. God will use it for his purposes. And even when we don't see it yet, we keep trusting him. You know, they did an experiment on trees. They had a controlled environment. They called it a biosphere. and They cost millions of dollars. And they created an environment where it was perfect for trees to grow. Perfect environment for trees to grow. They found that those trees, they grew very fast. They grew up, they shot up much faster than they would in the natural. Uh, and yet, when the trees came to full growth in this perfect environment where they grew very, very fast, when the trees got to full growth, they fell over. They couldn't bear the weight of the leaves. They couldn't bear the weight of the fruit because they hadn't built strong root systems. And, and what they discovered was that, that the wind and that the storms that trees encounter in the natural, they help to build strong root systems in those trees so that when they come to full growth, they're able to support the fruit. They're able to support the weight of that leaves. In other words, without the opposition of wind and, and storms coming, the trees never developed deep roots. You see, the evil day is not, God doesn't create the evil. That's a, choice, that's a result of man's wrong choices. But evil days now are opportunities for us to stand firm in Christ and to grow deep roots into Christ, into who we are in Christ. That's why Paul says in Romans 5, rejoice in tribulations and trials because they're producing character. And character are deep roots in the life of Christ, which we have, but they're deep roots in our spiritual understanding, in the renewal of our minds. We're forming deep roots so that when we grow and begin to bear fruit, we can bear it. See, God knows how much fruit we can bear. He won't allow the fruit to destroy us and grow so much that we just, we just topple over. No, but when we have this understanding, we begin to see the day of evil, not brought by God. Nobody enjoys it. I don't enjoy it any more than the next guy. But we begin to, like Paul said, we begin to embrace it, understanding that the day of evil is make, helping us to, number one, stand firm in Christ, but then grow deep roots. I'm encouraging, maybe you feel like 2021, it's a, it's a day of evil. The circumstances that are happening. Can I, can I encourage you? Can I encourage you to stand firm? And ask the question, God, now what? The difficulty happened. The, bad, the setback happened. The, 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 the pain happened. Now what, God? Now what? Where's the healing? Where's the, where's the freedom? Where's, now what? Have that attitude. And you know, I can tell you what a church family we have. Our ch you encourage me so very, very much. You know, this church family could have had the attitude and thought last year and this year, we're just going to wait out the pandemic. We're not going to reach out. We're not going to. But no, you haven't, you haven't had that attitude at all. You've had this now what kind of attitude. Now what, God? I think of our media team. Not only have you enabled, you know, we weren't doing live streams like this before. Now we are. But even helping Pastor Peter's campaigns, reaching, you know, online campaigns, reaching millions of people, different media, different language groups. I, you know, what, a, what an attitude of our church team. I think of so many of you who have joined the pastoral care team, calling, praying for people who are isolated and alone day after day after day, saying, I'm going to live a weighty life, a life of influence, a, a life of importance. And when you're calling that individual, praying for them, you're giving them a lifeline. I, I think of, you know, again, we could have sat back. I think of our Alpha program that's going on right now, discipling people, helping people. You could have thought, you know, we're just going to wait it out. The day of evil's upon us. No, but you've had this now what kind of attitude, a weighty life kind of attitude. I love it. Kids in our kids department, you know, we can't, you know, the kids haven't been able to come out on Sundays, but you've 
learn new ways. You're doing it by Zoom now. And I, I just so love the attitude of this church. Let's every one of us embrace this now what kind of attitude. The day of evil has come. But I, I'm not going to get stuck on the why. I know the what's of God. And he has more. He has, we're going from glory to glory. Not, this hasn't come to destroy us, but I'm standing firm in the life of Christ. Number one, stand firm in the evil day. Number two, stand firm in the winter season. Stand firm in the winter season. You know, Paul talked about in Philippians. In part of his, in, in Philippians chapter 4, don't go to the verse I put up yet, just hear me. In Philippians, he talks about all kinds of setbacks that he has. He talks about all the opposition in his life, uh, betrayals, and think, you know, things that are happening. And, you know, he lived a weighty life. Paul the Apostle in the Scriptures, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. I mean, he, he lived a weighty life. And you'd think, you could almost ask the question, God, why did you allow so much heartache, so much betrayal, so much setbacks to, to your precious servant Paul? Why, why didn't you protect him more, God? You could ask those questions. But I love what Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, and it, 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 puts, it allows us into his psyche and his way of thinking. Put it up, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. One translation uses the word seasons. He says, I can do all seasons through Christ who, who gives me strength. I can do all seasons. You know, Paul talked about seasons. In Galatians, he said, you know, don't grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we'll reap if we don't give up hope. You know, in the natural, not all seasons are harvest seasons. We love harvest seasons. I, my wife, Megan, grew up on a farm. She tells me how that harvest time was the most favorite time of the year. There was a magic about it. There was a joy about it. We all love harvest time. Winter doesn't always make sense. Now, put your, think about this for a moment. Pretend we had no Google. And some pretend that you were just plopped into Canada from another country, a country where there is no winter. Uh, and many of you are from countries where there is no winter. But imagine you don't have Google and you couldn't understand what winter was all about. Just plopped into the middle of winter and you begin to see trees are losing their leaves. The grass is turning brown. There's no growth anywhere. Uh, you know what? If you didn't have Google to understand what's going on, you might even begin to think, is God angry with Canada? Is God judging Canada? I mean, everything is dying here. There's nothing happening here. It's winter time. What's going on? On. And, and again, I understand with Google, we, that's, that's, that's not even logical anymore. But, but now, and we understand in our agricultural terms that winter time is a time of you know, rejuvenation for the ground, nutrients. In other words, preparing the ground for harvest. But if you didn't have any idea, it could be possible to think that the winter season of Canada, which we're going through right now, by the way, uh, you know, you think maybe God's angry. You know, and the same in the natural, when, when we're in that season. You know, again, Paul said, not every season is harvest season. There's seasons of planting. There's seasons of rejuvenation. And so in those seasons, sometimes when we're not seeing the fruit, we talked about evil day earlier, opposition, setbacks, and, and Paul experienced those certainly in his, in his ministry. It's possible to have the same attitude. God, why? Are you angry with me? God, where are you? You know, the winter season doesn't, doesn't mean that God's left you, and it certainly doesn't mean that he's angry with you. And what, what Paul's telling us here is keep on standing. How? Recognize your foundation in Christ. Recognize who you are. And yet you can do all seasons in Christ Jesus. Oh, I, I, I wish I could hear you today. But I want you to say, I can do all seasons in Christ. I mean, you're, you're a, and we are empowered and equipped in the victory of Christ to do all seasons. You know, winter often, we're in winter here in Canada. Many of you are watching from other parts of the world. You don't have winter like we do. But, but when you're in winter, we're in February, right? It feels like it's never going to end. Winter oftentimes feels permanent. Can I tell you, when life, when winter, when you're that winter season, it, see, it feels so permanent. Keep standing firm. Can I tell you, when the bad reports keep coming, I, you know, I talk to so many of you, I have prayer requests on our desk we'll pray for, over here that we'll pray for at the end. You know, so I, you know, last, I see them every Monday night, but when those bad reports, it can seem permanent, never ending, keep standing. When you're praying and don't see the answer, when you're being generous and don't see anything happening, when you're helping others, but you're still not receiving help yourself, keep standing firm in the victory of Christ. Can I, Romans chapter 8 says that the suffering of this present time is not to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed in Christ Jesus. We all face winter seasons. David, I mean, can you imagine when he was promoted to be king, uh, uh, into Saul's palace? I mean, what favor. And yet, 
it all spun around when he, Saul was throwing spears at him. I mean, that was like a winter season in his life. But he stood firm knowing who he was in God. I think of Paul in jail. I mean, when he's in jail, what a winter season that could be. But, you know, it was in jail where he wrote, two thir- where he wrote two-thirds of the, uh, of the New Testament. I mean, it's often in the winter seasons where God begins to do his best work in our lives. I think of C.S. Lewis. He's known as one of the greatest apologetic uh, teachers in our in our in, in modern era, and his most famous apologetic book is called Mere Christianity. You know where that work came out of? It came out of talks he gave in, during World War II. He was in England at the time, and at the time, UK, there was depression, there was gloom, there was a sense of hopelessness because Hitler had just conquered much of Europe, and now he'd set his sights on the UK, bombings every night. I mean, it was a hopeless, hopeless situation. And in the middle of that, C.S. Lewis, he gave, began to give talks on the BBC radio uh, every day, and out of those talks came this book, now the most, one of the most famous apologetic books of our era, Mere Christianity. And you know what a British air chief said uh, of this of C.S. Lewis at this time, Sir Donald Hardman. He said, the war, the whole of life, everything tended to be pointless. We needed many of us a key to the meaning of the universe, and Lewis provided that. You see, out of that winter season, God did his best in C.S. Lewis's life, and I see that in our church family. It looks in society like a winter season, pandemic, economic uh, volatility and fluctuations, and I see that in the prayer requests that come in uh, in our church family, but make no mistake, God uses it for his purposes. He turns that are, keep standing in Christ. Number three, final point. Keep standing firm in one spirit. Stand firm in one spirit. Paul said in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27, he said, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. That speaks of that weighty life in the kingdom of God. So that whether I come to come and see you or remain absent, I will hear of what you are doing. Standing firm in one spirit, standing firm in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. He's talking about a weighty life, a life of importance, of significance in the kingdom of God. And he says, stand firm in one spirit. In one spirit. You know, there's always reasons to not stand firm in one spirit. There's certainly a reason for us, Celebration Church, not to do that right now. We're not allowed to meet in person, although that's changing. Hopefully in a couple of weeks, we'll talk about that in a minute or two, but we'll be able to meet in person, but we're not right now. We haven't for a lot of the last year. It's easy just to be distracted. It's It's not always even sinister reasons. Distractions, different impediments, always a reason not to stay stand firm in one spirit. And yet Paul tells us that one of the keys to living a weighty life, not being distracted, is remaining one spirit in the body of Christ. Paul's uh, writing this to the church in Philippi. And just like, just like we have distractions, reasons not to stay in one spirit with the local church that God has called us to be a part of, so did they. But he says, you know, stay firm firm in one spirit. And you know, I have seen as my, my time as a pastor here, so many examples of how individuals have lived eternally weighty lives being connected in one spirit. I think of a couple in our church who Sunday after Sunday brought a lady who couldn't drive at the time to our church so she could attend. They went out of their way. It took their time. But you know that lady who they drove, she's now our youth pastor. I, I, I think of of last summer when we were allowed to meet at 30% capacity, a, a member in our church, she invited one of her coworkers to come and attend our services. And that coworker was suf- suffering from severe debilitating depression. And in those services, she was set free. And now her whole family's attending online. And she's always a part of everything that we're doing, bringing visitors, bringing more people. I see that weight, weighty life through that invitation, through driving. You know, I think of a, of a family in our church. They've been a part of our church for so long. And they, they've attended pretty much every Sunday, as long as I've been a pastor here, and, and been attending at this church. And I've seen them bring their kids every Sunday, Sunday after Sunday. You know, that's a lot. I have kids now. I understand that's a lot of work. It takes energy. And that could easily be a distraction from remaining in that one spirit kind of attitude. But they kept doing it. You know, now their sons are grown. But that I think of their one son. He's one of our youth leaders in our youth department right now. And so I've seen how their sacrifice, you could say, by, by, by every Every Sunday, getting their kids ready, bringing them out to church. At times, I'm sure they could say, what's the point? But now they're beginning to see that fruit. They see that's a weighty life in one spirit. Or I think of a lady in our church who, you know, she lost her husband. 
And, and you know, that broke her heart. It was the love of her life and so attached. And, you know, that, that brought on, you know, that's a difficulty. That's a hurt and that's a pain. But she didn't get stuck on the why. It took a process, but she moved to the what. What now, God? And you know now every Tuesday night on our streaming broadcast, she has a Bible study. Vera, you know who I'm talking about. But I see time and time again how th- by staying in one spirit, God empowers us to ordinary people. I'm an ordinary person, but to live a weighty life in this. And in 20, we have so many distractions. We're not even allowed to meet in person yet. Uh, but we're going to soon. But, but, but there's, there's many reasons not to stay connected in one spirit. But we were called to live a weighty life. A weighty life. Yes, standing firm in the day of evil. Yes, standing firm in the, the winter season. But also in one spirit in Christ Jesus. Final example, I think of a, you know, last year there was, a, there was an individual in our church, a man. And he, he lost his job. He was part of our giving family. He was a regular giver, a regular tither, but he lost his job. You know, but he had this attitude, I'm going to stay connected in one spirit to the giving family. And so he kept giving. Even though he had lost his job, he kept giving, kept being, kept being a part of this spirit through the giving family. And you know what? He got, last December, he got a job even better than what he had lost. So I've seen it time and time again. You know that God's called individuals to be a part of, there's the ministry gift of giving, and he's a part of that. And many of you are as well. And so I see how you're staying connected in one spirit. Be encouraged today is one of the keys to living a weighty life in Christ Jesus standing firm. The question is not will we encounter evil days. The question is how will we face them? And I know I'm talking to believers here today. Uh, stand, you, we're going to stand firm in the victory of Christ Jesus. We're going we're to stand firm in his victory understanding that he's going to, that, 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 that when the evil, encounter, when the righteous encounter evil, the righteous get better, the righteous get stronger, they get more equipped. They're not getting stuck on the whys of life. There's certain whys we may never figure out until eternity, but understand Understanding what now, God? And God's got big what's in your future. He's got big what's in the future of your family, your children, your finances. Let's not get stuck. And I, final verse for today, and then we're going to pray. But in Psalm, and Pastor Peter's coming up, but in Psalm chapter 41, I love what, what David said. He said, by this I know that you are pleased with me, because my enemy does not shout in triumph over me. By this I know that you're pleased with me because my enemy does not shout in triumph over me. In other words, notice what David says. He just says, I know you love me. I know you've given me favor. Not because you've kept all the storms from me. Not because you've kept all the difficulties from me. By this I know, because the storms, the difficulties, the setbacks, the hurts, the pains, they haven't stopped me. And that's the kind of attitude that you have. I know you're tuned in today in the middle of a pandemic. You have that attitude. Yes, the storms will come. The day of evil will come. Jesus said many are the afflictions. But by this we know, because the storms of life, the days of evil, the winter seasons, they haven't stopped you. They won't stop you. You're standing firm in the victory of Christ. You're standing firm in the life of Christ. And there is victory today. It's rising up today in your spirit person. I can sense it right now. The scripture says that when they taught in the New, in the New Testament, when Jesus, the power of the Lord was present. And while we are not together in person, I can sense the power of the Lord right now present to heal, present to restore, present to set free, present to give the spirit of faith rising up now, the power of the Lord in every home. I've got just three minutes left, and then I'm going to throw it to Pastor Peter, but would you lift up your hands right now? Jesus, I thank you that in every home, your power is present. I thank you, Father, that the evil day The winter season will not stop. That individual watching, the setback, the hurt, the pain. But Father, I thank you that in Christ, they are victorious, standing firm in the victory that you have planted them in. And I thank you that your power is available now, is present now. You're healing sick bodies. You're restoring minds in Jesus' name. Freedom, liberty, wisdom coming now to individuals. Creative, inventive ideas, Father. In the name of Jesus, we worship you and we receive in Jesus' name. We're not done the service. I've got one more thing I want to say. Then we'll go to Pastor Peter and we'll have another time of prayer. But let me say this as well. It's possible. First of all, let me say, I know people, you're, many of you are receiving. I want to hear from you. Email me, call me, let me know. 
But you know, it's possible to miss out entirely on this weighty life that I'm speaking of, a weighty life found in the kingdom of God, found in Jesus Christ because of misconceptions of who God is, suffering and pain. So many people say, you know, I, how can I believe in a God? There's, there's pain, there's suffering in this world. How can it be? Well, the, the ultimate why is because the sins of humanity. We chose evil. You know, God designed us with a spirit that can soar, a soul that can love, a mind that can invent, that can choose. But we were given a free will. We are spirits on a human journey. And God designed us with this ability, but he also gave us the ability to choose. And in choosing, mankind chose evil. And as a result, there's hurts, there's pains. And, but you see, what happened is God wasn't about to leave us in our hurts and our pains. That's the message of the gospel. Yes, there's hurts and yes, there's pains. But God, he doesn't want to leave us in that situation. He doesn't want to leave you today in that situation. So he sent his son Jesus into our mess, into our pains, into our hurts. And he's here right now. He's present now to come into our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our emotions, and to make things new, to heal, to restore. You say, how, do I rest how, do I, how does that happen, Nathan? It happens by simply believing on Jesus. And the scripture says when we believe on Jesus and confess him as Lord, he comes into our hearts, our minds, our spirits, and he makes them new. And he begins to heal, begins to restore. Where there was pain, he heals and he makes things new. Where there was suffering, he makes beauty for ashes. Can I invite you today to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? It doesn't mean you have everything figured out. I do not have everything figured out. But it means you believe in this God of love who presented himself through Jesus Christ on the cross and who is now today available.